Ông quay cho. Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. Ông. The court is now back in session. And again, the chamber is handing the floor to the deputy international co-prosecutor to put further questions to the witness, Mr. Richard Dutman. Do you have the floor? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, Mr. Dutman, um, uh, we, uh, we very much appreciate uh, you making your effort to testify here uh, as a 96-year-old. It's, it's an amazing thing. Um, uh, I'm going to continue uh, reading uh, some of your the things you wrote from your trip. Uh, I realize um, that you may not remember too much uh, at this point. Um, these, uh, some of the statements you've made, though, are uh, quite of uh, quite interest uh, uh, to us. And um, uh, if nothing else, we want to make sure they're part of the record here. Uh, and I will continue to ask you some follow-up questions. And uh, hopefully, maybe some of this uh, will spark some um, uh, some recollections. Um, I'm going to continue uh, in an article uh, that is titled uh, The Enemy Vietnam. Uh, this is in uh, E3 uh, 3290 uh, at English ERN 0419207, uh, Khmer 01070697. And uh, here's what you wrote, uh, I quote, throughout the visit, officials denounced the Vietnamese continually, as did Radio Phnom Penh, as fascists, false communists, aggressors, the Cubans of Asia, country swallowers, and crocodile, a most ungrateful animal which does not recognize as master the person who feeds it. The foreign ministry official who toured the country with us took us to a zoo at one point, said, come see the Vietnamese prisoners. He led the way to a pit with 60 big crocodiles in it. At another time, the official said with a straight face that all Vietnamese army officers have three wives, one in Hanoi, another in Saigon, and the third at the front. End of quote. Do you remember your reaction when you heard Democratic Campuchia officials making remarks like this about the Vietnamese in your presence. Well, as a journalist, I figured that was a nice nugget for a story. And uh, I put it in because I thought it would uh, and both amuse and enlighten our readers. <coughs> uh, Mr. Dudman, I, I want to read uh, to you now uh, a couple of examples from uh, DK radio broadcasts uh, during the time you were in the country in December 1978. Your Honor, uh, these are from uh, E3 slash 295, uh, the FIBIS records uh, for December 1978. In, at page 00169107, uh, this was a broadcast on the 16th of December 1978, uh, which reads as follows. According to sources in Vietnam, the Ludun Pam Van Dong troops are more barbaric, fascist, and puritical than those of the former Chu Ki regime. Continuing in the next paragraph. In early November, a soldier wearing a one-star rank insignia cut off a woman's hand to rob her of a gold bracelet. 
and then continuing in the same paragraph, ah, worse still Nord. is that the lead Bruin administration suivant, has ordered each southern Bruin family to give room and board to a soldier from the north. These soldiers uh, can loot the people's property Peuvent at will. They have even raped in a most barbarous manner the wives of the head of the families with whom they live. End of quote. A broadcast uh, on the 21st of December 1978 by the Phnom Penh Radio. This is at 00169159. Quote, the skinny and wounded Vietnamese dog has been so infected by the virus of defeat, insanity, and famine that even its Soviet masters cannot help it. This skinny and wounded Vietnamese dog is now becoming even skinnier and will soon die. End of quote. And last, uh, on the 18th of December 1978, at 00169135, there was a broadcast of a confession, a reported confession, of a female Vietnamese spy, states, uh, the confession of Li T. Vinh Sang, an espionage agent of the Vietnamese aggressors captured by our Campuchian Revolutionary Army in Spy Ring Province on the 25th of September 1978, clearly shows that the Vietnamese Li Duan clique has committed most cruel and savage acts against the Capuchia Krom minority. They have strangled babies to death and given lethal injections to mothers who had just given birth. Uh, end of quote. Uh, Mr. Dudman, um, I read to you these excerpts. My question is a simple one. Uh, is this the same type of anti-Vietnamese rhetoric uh, that you heard while you were in Democratic Kampuchea in December 1978? I, I think it's the same thing. I wish I had heard that one at the time. I could have used that. Do you remember, did you ever um, review uh, Phibis reports um, uh, of radio broadcasts from Democratic Campuchia? Or do you remember how it is that you uh, became aware of what was being broadcast by Radio Phnom Penh? I don't recall uh, knowing about those broadcasts. Maybe I did, but I don't remember. In the uh, first two uh, paragraphs of uh, Article E305-12.54, E305, Slash 12.54. Uh, you reported a, a statement made by Pol Pot uh, on the 22nd of December 1978, uh, which is the day you met uh, with him. You and Ms. Becker met with him. And this is what you wrote that Pol Pot said. Pol Pot said that 95% of the people in Democratic Kampuchea were good, that they had been able to re-educate and recover, in his words, another 4%, and that they were still working on the re-education of the other 1%. Uh, Mr. Dudman, do you remember, uh, was this something that Pol Pot said to you in during your face-to-face si -face meeting, um, or do you remember um, receiving written answers uh, to questions that you and Ms. Becker had provided? I don't remember how I got those quotes. Do you remember whether Pol Pot uh, provided any explanation of how he knew the percentage of people in Democratic Kampuchea who were being subjected to re-education. I don't know.
I'm going to now ask you about some uh, specific Khmer Rouge cadres um, uh, that your group uh, inquired about or were given information about during your visit. Um, in your article uh, titled Governing in Secret, uh, this is in document E3 slash 3290, uh, English ERN 00419211, Khmer ERN 01070714. Uh, you reported that you had been told by a Ministry of Foreign Affairs official, Ok Sakun, that, uh, I quote, Hu Nim, Minister of Information, and Hu Yun, Minister of the Interior, were still active in the government, although believed in the West to be missing or dead, end of quote. And I'm also going to refer, uh, at this time, to a document E333.1, um, E33.1, Mr. Dudman, is a uh, 18 December 1978 report uh, that was written by uh, Democratic Campuchia officials about your visit, and it contains a section titled Additional Requests by the Guests. Uh, at English 01054090, Khmer 01047239, French 01054094. Uh, and in this document, uh, it indicates, quote, the British professor asked about Je cite, Chao Seng le professeur and britannique Fok a posé des Chai. questions au sujet de Chao uh, Seng quote. et Pok Chai. And uh, I realize I'm asking a lot here, uh, Mr. Dudman. Uh, do you have any memory beaucoup, uh, Dudman, of the responses that you, Ms. Becker, Mr. Caldwell received uh, when you made inquiries about uh, cadres uh, such as those referenced here? I don't remember any responses. <coughs> For the record, uh, Your Honors, uh, document E3 slash 2285 at Khmer ERN 00009220223, English 00873450461 uh, is a list from the S21 prison titled Names of Prisoners Smashed on the 6th of July 1977. Uh, it identifies 127 prisoners who were executed at the S21 prison on that day. Uh, number 123 on the list is Fok Chai, one of the cadres who Malcolm Caldwell had asked about. And number 125 on that list is Minister of Propaganda Hu Nim, a person uh, that um, you, Mr. Dudman, were told was still alive when you were in Democratic Campuchia in December 1978. Um, do you remember um, whether you had any uh, impressions during your trip uh, on whether Democratic Campuchia officials uh, were being honest with you about uh, prisoners, political prisoners uh, in the country. I don't remember. In the um, one of the reports I mentioned earlier, uh, this is again a report from a Democratic Campuchia official, E3. 1156. Uh, this is a report that listed requests that you uh, had made for the trip. Uh, number seven, the, the seventh request attributed to you, Mr. Dudman, uh, indicated uh, that you had accused the revolution of executing people and that you wanted to see political prisons 
and to be explained how the revolution dealt with political opponents. What was the response uh, you received to your request to be shown a prison or re-education office? I don't recall what response I got. Did you visit any prisons or re-education offices when you were in Democratic Kampuchea? Not that I can remember. Have you ever had the opportunity to um, uh, visit S21 or the Tool Slang prison in Phnom Penh? Uh, and do you know that this prison um, is located only about a mile or so away uh, from where you were staying uh, when you were in Phnom Penh in December 1978. I don't recall visiting that prison. Your Honours, based on um, E3-342, which is the OCP revised S21 prisoner list, and E3-1651, uh, which is an S21 <coughs> interrogation log uh, for December 1978. Uh, there were a total of 35 new prisoners who were sent to S21 on the 10th of December 1978. That was your first uh, full day in Phnom Penh on your trip, Mr. Dudman. Those prisoners included three female cadres who had been arrested from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and eight medical cadres, including a 16-year-old female who worked at a hospital. And on the next day, uh, the 11th of December 1978, while you were still in Phnom Penh, uh, the S20 record, S21 documents record uh, that 28 prisoners were taken away and executed that day. Uh, this is one prison on the first two days of your trip. Uh, did the foreign ministry officials who accompanied and talked to you uh, ever disclose to you uh, in any way uh, that people were being arrested uh, and sent to prisons while you were there, uh, or the fact that people from their own ministry, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, had been arrested and were being detained in prisons in Phnom Penh. I don't recall being told about that at all. <laughs> Uh, what's what's the purpose of questioning uh, Mr. Dutman like this? Obviously, Pourquoi he hasn't been told this. It's just for the purposes of entering into the record S21 documents. Uh, we have a segment of, on S21 coming up. I think that is the more appropriate um, time and place to do it. It doesn't really help any, uh, anything uh, designed with questioning, it doesn't. But the answer was already given, so um, technically I don't object anymore. Mr. President, uh, uh, this witness has written about uh, political prisoners, his effort to make inquiries about the status of them. Uh, this prison was uh, about a mile away from where he was. I think I'm entitled to ask a few questions uh, related to uh, whether he was provided any access or prevented from learning about what was going on. President, uh, the deputy co-presenter, you can uh, resume your questions, and the chairman would like to remind the parties again that you can put questions through the witness who are of uh, senior age about all the facts being debated before this chamber, that is during that uh, witness testimony. You may proceed, the co-prosecutor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Dudman, um, do you remember uh, while you were in Phnom Penh whether you uh, and Ms. Becker were allowed to move freely about the city?
I don't really remember. Réponse, je ne m'en souviens pas vraiment. Let me read a, uh, a short excerpt from one of your articles to see if that uh, refreshes your recollection. Uh, in uh, E3 slash 3290 at English 00419207, uh, Khmer 01070693, through 94, uh, this is what you wrote, quote, officials warned us against wandering off unescorted, even in almost deserted Phnom Penh. When we slipped away several times, believing the warnings to be a mere excuse to keep us from seeing too much, the guards quickly found us and drove us back by automobile to whichever guest house we were occupying at the time. On one occasion, a guard took Miss Becker by the arm and gently but firmly conducted her home. End of quote. Does that refresh your recollection, Mr. Dudman, on whether you were allowed to move about freely in Phnom Penh? Uh, I read that portion uh, just uh, yesterday, and uh, it, uh, I can't, can't really place myself back in that situation, but it, it sort of rang a, rang a bell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dudman. Um, yesterday, um, Noon Che's counsel spent uh, some time with you uh, on your uh, August 1990 uh, op-ed piece in the New York Times. Um, he read to you um, a statement in the fifth paragraph of that uh, article E307 slash 5.2.16, uh, which referenced the conventional wisdom uh, that Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge were irrational fanatics who practiced deliberate genocide, a conventional wi wisdom that you were questioning. Um, towards the end of that same article, I'd like to read another uh, quote to you. Um, you wrote as follows, quote, but what about the killing fields and the stacks of skulls? The remains of a few hundred victims are undeniable evidence of mass executions, but they have no bearing on the question of how many were slain and certainly do not prove genocide. My own conclusion is that Pol Pot is not an irrational fanatic, but a revolutionary leader who was riding a tiger. A violent, disorderly uprising by poor, ignorant, downtrodden country people. Deeply resentful of urbanites, they had no compunction about driving city people into the countryside and letting them die or even clubbing them to death if they fell by the wayside or couldn't stand hard manual labor." Uh, end of quote. Um, I have just a couple of follow-up questions to this, Mr. Dudman. Um, when you wrote this op-ed piece in 1990, uh, had you had the opportunity to review uh, the surviving records from the S-21 prison in Phnom Penh, uh, records which showed that over 12,000 people had been killed at that prison alone? I don't believe I had that information, but I don't recall. You, you testified yesterday that since the time you wrote this article in 1990, uh, you have consulted uh, new sources um, and read materials that has caused you to change your conclusions about the occurrence of genocide or mass atrocities uh, during the Khmer Rouge regime. Uh, can you tell us some of the sources um, that you have read or people that you have talked to since 1990 uh, that led you to change your opinion?
I guess my opinion did change some, but uh, I can't really recall what caused that. Mais je ne me souviens pas vraiment pour quelle raison j'ai changé d'avis. We uh, talked about uh, earlier an article uh, you wrote in December 1978 titled uh, Conformity, a Must for Survival in Cambodia. And at the very end of that article, and this is E338.19, you wrote, and I quote, a reasonable appraisal on balance seems to be that a major factor in the violent death, whatever their number, occurring in the last three and a half years has been the working out of the unparalleled social upheaval of this revolution. Whether the leaders encouraged or moderated the violence or just rode with the tide is hard to say." End of quote. Mr. Dudman, um, when you visited Democratic Kampuchea in 1978, uh, were you given access um, to documents uh, by the Khmer Rouge? And specifically, um, do you remember ever being allowed to review uh, a publication called Revolutionary Flag? Uh, an internal document that has uh, circulated by the party that has flags on its cover, uh, something that was sent to the party cadres uh, every month. Uh, do you remember receiving, being given access to any documents like this uh, by the democratic officials when you were in Cambodia? I don't recall getting any such documents. Uh, Mr. Dudman, a number of the uh, surviving issues of the revolutionary flag publication are now in evidence in these proceedings. Uh, I'd like to read to you uh, one excerpt um, from the April 1977 issue of Revolutionary Flag E3-742 uh, to get your reaction. Uh, this is a... Uh, this Issue of Revolutionary Flag published a speech by a party leader on the implementation of the 1977 party plan. Uh, and at English 00478496, French 00499754, Khmer 00062986, uh, the following instructions were provided. Uh, to the party cadres, I quote, as for the enemies that are CIA, KGB, and UN agents, Vietnamese agents, the cheap running dogs of the enemy that sneakily embedded inside our revolution and our revolutionary ranks, we must continue to strike them and trample them from our position of absolute advantage and must constantly be on the offensive against them during 1977 to smash them even more so they cannot raise their heads. And a few pages later, a few pages later uh, English 00478501, French 00499, 758, Khmer 00062991, quote, it is imperative to indoctrinate and whip up the masses into a force to seek out the enemy, assess the enemy, analyze the enemy, track the enemy, pressure the enemy, capture the enemy, to smash the enemy, and to make the enemy be like a rat surrounded by a crowd of people beating and smashing it." Uh, end of quote. Um, am I correct, uh, Mr. Dudman, that uh, you were not aware of evidence like this and had not been provided uh, these documents when you wrote either your articles in December 1978 or your op-ed piece in August 1990. I wasn't aware of that language. <coughs> Would you agree that this 
uh, evidence seems to help Question. answer uh, the question you raised at the end of your uh, article, uh, that is whether Khmer Rouge leaders were encouraging or facilitating the violence there. It certainly sounds like they were whipping it up. Another... Uh, the prosecutor, please write and counsel for Kyosun Porn. Do you have the floor? Yes, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. Yes, 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 Mr.
we note that we have given a lot of leeway when it came to the questioning of this witness, also to the Defence Council. We have accepted more speculative questions than we would normally have also for the Defence Council. But I think it has become obvious the last uh, one and a half days that the witness memory is limited. So we would strongly suggest that um, questions are limited to what the witness is actually supposed to testify to, and this is facts, frankly presenting documents, then asking for confirmation that he doesn't know them, and then asking him what he would have done if he had known them is perhaps stretching the limits of even the leeway the chamber has given too much. Am I entitled to confirm whether the witness had access to certain types of evidence when he visited Democratic Campuchia and when he wrote his articles? But generally, yes, but perhaps not after reading for minutes, pages and pages of these documents. I'm sure this is possible to verify in a more general way. I, I will proceed to do that and then I will wrap up my, my questions, Your Honor. Um, I was asking Mr. Dudman about another a category of documents that are in evidence in these proceedings. And there are about three to four hundred surviving telegrams and reports that were sent to the party leaders in Phnom Penh uh, from the zones and various organizations in Democratic Campuchia. A simple question. Um, when you were in Democratic Campuchia, uh, were you provided access to telegrams and reports that were sent to the party leaders in Phnom Penh on what was going on in the country? Mr. President, this is, with all respect, a ridiculous question. I mean, no, no, no government even today would give access to journalists or telegrams or this. Of course, Mr. Dutton didn't see any telegrams. It's evident that Mr. Dutton had no access to any telegrams. Mr. Dutton, did you? Receive any documents like that when you were in Democratic Campuchia? Uh, had, had you ever reviewed uh, telegrams or reports like that before you wrote your op-ed piece in 1990? I don't recall receiving such documents. Um, I'm getting near the end of my questions, uh, Mr. Dudman. Um, were you, um, Mr. Dudman, uh, one of the journalists in the United States um, who was put on the so-called uh, enemy list of President Nixon? Yes, I was. Can you explain to the court what that enemy list was? en quoi consistait cette liste d'ennemis. I think it's just what it said it was, the list that the Nixon administration considered enemies. Il s'agissait pour l'administration de voir ce qu'elle pensait des ennemis. After you were put on the enemy list by the President of the United States, uh, were you arrested and sent for re-education by the United States government? No, they don't do that. Did you continue to be employed as the Washington bureau chief of a major US, US newspaper despite being on Nixon's enemy list? Uh, yes, uh, uh, it, it, it uh, may even have helped my standing. Based on your uh, observations 
uh, from your trip to Democratic Camp Chia, uh, what happened to Cambodian dissenters who made the enemy list of the Khmer Rouge leaders? Que pensez-vous qu'il soit arrivé aux opposants cambodgiens qui avaient été déplacés sur la liste d'ennemis des dirigeants Khmer Rouge Well, from what I read, they were exterminated. D'après ce que j'ai lu, les personnes étaient exterminées. The last um, item I'd like to Question. ask you about, J'aimerais aborder un dernier uh, Mr. sujet Dudman avec is vous, from Mr. document E333.1. Uh, this is the uh, 18 December 1978 report uh, that was written by Democratic Campuchia officials about your visit to the country. And at English 01054091, Khmer 01047240, French 01054095, the Democratic official who wrote this, Democratic Campuchy official who wrote this, said the following, I quote, the two American journalists clearly serve the American government and the CIA as we have precisely identified, end of quote. Do you have any reaction uh, to the assertion in this report that you, a person who had been on President Nixon's enemy Vous list was working for or serving the interests of the CIA. That's a lie. Mr. Dudman, uh, thank you uh, very much for Question. bearing with me beaucoup, uh, today Dudman. with my Merci reading of uh, a lot of documents. Uh, the Co prosecutors appreciate very much. Um, your effort to testify in this proceedings. Uh, Mr. President, no further questions. President, thank you. Merci. And the Chamber would like now to give the floor to la the lead co lawyers for civil parties. You may proceed. Merci. Yes, thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Bonjour, uh, Monsieur good Dudman. Evening, Mr. Dudman. Je m'appelle Marie Guiraud I am Marie et je suis l'avocat qui représente le collectif des partis civils dans ce procès. Je vais tenter de I'm tenir going compte de vos observations, Mme Juge Fence, et essayer de, uh, d'en appeler à la mémoire de notre, de notre témoin et de me contenter of, uh, du coup de, des réponses qu'il pourra nous fournir en, en essayant de, de le faire réagir à un certain nombre de, de témoignages que nous, que nous avons entendus depuis le début de, de cette audience. Uh, Monsieur Dudman, je Mr. voudrais Dutman, commencer par I would like to citer à mon tour un document, a document cité uh, par a document that le coprocureur il y a quelques by instants, the co a few et c'est cette fameuse liste ago, de requêtes que vous aviez formulée à l'époque aux responsables du Campuchia démocratique qui avait organisé votre visite en tour décembre 1978. Et il s'agit donc du uh, document E3-11. Uh, 1156. Et dans ce document, au paragraphe 2, dans lequel in vos which, requêtes uh, your sont requests are explicited, vous indiquez you say, au numéro 6 at request number six, que l'une des requêtes que vous formuliez en vue de votre visite for this était tour was votre souhait de your, voir les activités des unités the mobile units at work and to see how the cooperatives were organized and also to visit two to three cooperatives. Ma première question, so my first le question, question avec Mr. Dutman, is do you remember having insisted, insisted visiter des coopératives to comprendre visit leur cooperatives and to understand how they were organized and more particularly les activités do you understand mobiles. having requested to see the mobile units at work? I don't recall my request. 
Je ne me souviens pas de ces demandes. Je vous remercie. Uh, thank de manière you. du coup beaucoup plus générale, pouvez-vous expliquer à la cour, the court ce dont vous vous souvenez de euh, la visite des coopératives que vous avez effectuées lors de votre séjour au Kampuchea démocratique when, uh, en décembre 1978. Et je commencerai par une première question, vous vous souvenez-vous du nombre de coopératives que vous avez été amené à visiter Vous vous souvenez du nombre de coopératives que vous avez été amené à visiter I do not remember that. Je ne m'en souviens pas. Vous souvenez-vous de manière générale do you remember avoir visité having des coopératives visited cooperatives, generally speaking? No, I don't recall that. Non, je ne m'en souviens pas. Avez-vous le moindre souvenir de vous être rendu avec euh, Madame Becker et euh, Monsieur Caldwell dans la coopérative, Caldwell dans la province de Takeo et dans la coopérative de Lebo Est-ce que c'est un nom qui vous dit quelque chose Je ne me souviens pas de cette visite. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Avez-vous le moindre souvenir Do you remember in any way de personnes en train de travailler lors de votre visite en décembre 1978 Et si vous, vous pouvez-vous expliquer ce que And vous avez vu de ces personnes working, qui travaillaient can you tell us sur what you remember? Euh, les chantiers can you que tell vous auriez visités Je ne me souviens pas de ces visites. I have only what I wrote at the time. Je me souviens uniquement de ce que j'ai écrit à l'époque. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le témoin. Thank you, Mr. Dudman. Pouvez-vous nous expliquer Can ce que vous vous souvenez aujourd'hui euh, des discussions que vous avez pu avoir avec les gens que vous avez rencontrés à l'époque sur les conditions de travail dans les coopératives Est-ce que c'est un sujet dont vous avez parlé Et il semblerait que oui. Et si oui, quelles sont les informations case, dont vous vous souvenez aujourd'hui Je ne vous souviens pas de d'avoir obtenu ce genre d'information. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le témoin. Thank you, Mr. Dudman. Monsieur le Président, je, Mr. President, nous arrivons à, uh, à l'heure, me semble-t-il. Uh, je souhaiterais aussi so profiter du coup de la pause pour uh, maybe I will take réorganiser les questions de telle manière uh, que je so puisse peut-être un, un peu plus questions. interagir And maybe have avec le témoin, notamment uh, en faisant interact réagir a bit more. sur les in particular by having him react uh, to specific excerpts écrit, of articles that he wrote. I think that might be a better way of jogging Donc, his memory. Uh, so, given that it's uh, 10 o'clock almost, uh, I suggest that we stop now pour, uh, and that uh, we continue tomorrow morning for about a half an hour. Bah, oh, President, uh, thank you. Le président, merci. And the Chamber would like to thank you, Mr. Richard Dutman, and the hearing Richard of your Dutman. testimony today is uh, concluded. However, Notre your testimony is not yet uh, finished, and you will terminé. be invited uh, once again to continue your Vous testimony tomorrow, that is Wednesday the 1st of April 2015, 2015, from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock uh, morning time, that is uh, Cambodian time, that is at the same time as of today. And the Chamber would like also to thank Mr. Todd Lowell and Mr. Jason Barrett for your assistance. And you are once again to be invited to accompany Mr. Richard Dutman for his testimony tomorrow from 8 to 10 o'clock in the morning Cambodian local time. And you may now have a break, and we see you tomorrow.
Vous pouvez à présent aller vous reposer. Nous vous retrouverons demain. Thank you. Le témoin, merci. President, AV unit, please uh, disconnect the link to, uh, to the video conference. Service de visuel, veuillez interrompre la connexion. We have uh, two small matters uh, to be uh, processed. First is a ruling for, by, for the request by the prosecution. And Suite à une second, de the concern raised by the defense teams regarding Ensuite, the victim's statement of impact as well as uh, the closing brief in the case of uh, 001. Aux de clôture dans le cas 001. President, the chamber will now provide an oral ruling through the request by the international co-prosecutor, that is document E342. The chamber insists of a request filed on 3rd March 2015 from the international co-prosecutor to admit into evidence a book titled Brothers in Arms, Chinese Aid to the Khmer Rouge, 1975-1979, authored by Andrew Merthan, that is document E342. The chamber needs to assess if the requirements of Internet La Rule 87.3 are made. The chamber notes that the book is 175 pages long and only available in English, and that the request came at a late stage of the proceedings. To allow for a timely decision, the Chamber requests the international co-prosecutor to submit a new request, identifying the relevant excerpts within two weeks, failing which the request to admit the book will be considered moot. And next, I'd like to hand the floor to Nguyen Chia's defense Je vais à la to défense de Nguyen Chia present uh, their request and their supporting uh, brief to uh, have the floor, counsel. Sa à um, thank you, uh, Mr. President, um, and Merci, thank you for Monsieur allowing us to um, make some oral submissions in relation to a um, request done by the civil parties in respect of the upcoming um, civil impact um, testimony hearing on Thursday and Friday. Um, yesterday, um, we sent by email uh, an excerpt from our Nous appeal brief, par um, not our closing submissions, but our appeal brief. De notre and, um, and in this appeal brief, in, in these submissions in our appeal brief, Dans we have um, argued Nous that um, in the judgment in case uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 002 slash 01, Premier jugement du deuxième dossier. An amount of 255 times, um, if we calculate it correctly, si nous avons bien calculé, evidence that has been presented during uh, civil impact uh, hearings des de uh, was used as evidence. And 
Councilor Coupe, could you please uh, start uh, afresh as uh, there is no translation uh, to what you said earlier? Uh, of course, Mr. President. Um, yesterday we requested to be allowed to have some, uh, to provide you with some oral submissions in relation to an earlier request uh, by the civil party lawyers. That request was relating to the civil um, party impact testimony Les which is scheduled um, coming France Thursday and coming Friday and, and um, yesterday we have sent you um, a few paragraphs um, not from our uh, closing briefs but from our appeal brief non pas de notre um, and in, this, de in these excerpts in our appeal brief we have um, criticized uh, the judgment in the sense that um, approximately 255 times uh, testimony provided during the civil impact uh, hearings uh, was actually used as evidence going um, to uh, the guilt um, of the accused and the actions of the accused. Um, we feel that although the trial chamber has clearly set out um, what the law is uh, on this issue, uh, that we cannot be sure that this will not happen uh, again um, when at one point in time the trial chamber will write its judgment in this case. Um, I would like to refer you more specifically to the arguments that we have set forth in our um, appeal brief. Um, but and that's the reason why our oral submissions could be relatively short. Having, uh, having made these arguments, I believe brève, that the proposed schedule um, by the civil party uh, lawyers uh, would not be uh, an adequate way of dealing with the situation. Um, or the schedule on Thursday and Friday, as I understand it, the proposed schedule is one hour and five minutes per civil party. However, realizing uh, that um, testimony given during the civil party uh, impact hearings might in fact be used as evidence, uh, we feel that um, the hour and what, five minutes proposed should uh, be equally divided in time in the sense that um, if the civil party lawyers are questioning um, uh, the civil party and the civil party is actually testifying about uh, events that are, that are being adjudicated, we should have equal time. Alors nous devrions um, tous me, savoir le même uh, temps. Mr. President, give you an example. Je vous donne un exemple, um, Monsieur le Président. If a civil party, si for instance, says um, that she has suffered exemple, from her period in, in time in, in, in DK and she's describing um, um, the ways that she has suffered, that of course is something that we would, we would not anticipate chose, um, asking questions to the civil party about. However, if uh, the civil party gives testimony saying that she didn't have enough sujet. to eat, si, um, that children manger, died because of malnutrition, uh, that relatives were sent to re-education centers and disappeared, that uh, is, as you might realize, uh, evidence which goes directly Comme vous le to um, ce uh, the crimes that we are discussing. If that is the case, then we feel we need to have the opportunity to uh, cross-examine the civil party on the content of the evidence. Um, de le ideally, de um, of course, we would, we would, we would not uh, Dans make such a request if it was 100% certain that at the end of this uh, trial proceedings you wouldn't use whatever si has been said by the civil party as evidence. However, as you have seen in our appeal brief, we uh, are of the uh, opinion that that has not been the case. Uh, that's why, uh, summing up our arguments uh, and, and, and looking at the practicalities of coming Thursday and Friday, we believe that if, um, no, we believe that we should have uh, half time 
uh, of the allotted time, la moitié unless the civil party only speaks about her mental or physical suffering as such. Then, of course, we have uh, the proper situation uh, as anticipated by the internal rules. But of course, we cannot anticipate what civil party is going to be uh, uh, saying or what the civil party is going to be testifying to. Therefore, our request is very uh, uh, concrete uh, and, I believe, simple. Uh, from the start, we need to have uh, half of the time. La uh, or actually at the same time as the civil parties would have uh, when leading uh, the civil parties. Thank you. President, thank you. And the Councillor for Kirsten Pond, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, je dois dire que uh, nous I partageons un certain nombre de préoccupations uh, de uh, la défense du Nunchea. Uh, Jusqu'à présent, uh, dans le cadre du procès 02-1, uh, il y avait une vraie distinction entre uh, les uh, audiences uh, au cours desquelles les parties civiles uh, intervenaient à la fois pour uh, parler uh, des faits et pour parler uh, de leur expérience personnelle et euh, la distinction de cette phase d'expression des souffrances qui euh, appartenait à, euh, euh, à, une version plus, à une vision plus personnelle euh, de euh, ce qu'elle ressentait pour que vous puissiez euh, euh, évaluer euh, le degré des souffrances et en tenir compte éventuellement dans le cadre d'une condamnation. La question soulevée par mon confrère et qui forcément se pose également à nous est de savoir quel va être le statut de ces dépositions à l'audience. Est-ce que vous allez uniquement les considérer dans le cadre de l'évaluation personnelle des souffrances de ces parties civiles qui ont été choisies par leurs co-avocats pour venir déposer en ce sens Ou est-ce que elles auront euh, un impact plus large en ce qui concerne la preuve apportée au dossier. Dans ces conditions, il est évident, comme vient de l'indiquer mon confrère, que notre position en tant qu'avocat de la défense est différente s'il s'agit simplement euh, d'évoquer euh, euh, la vision et les souffrances personnelles des parties civiles et s'il s'agit d'aller au cœur de l'examen des faits, qui a évidemment un impact sur euh, le, le, ce que nous devons ou ne devons pas faire dans le cadre de la défense de notre client. Donc ce que je vous demande, moi, à ce stade-ci, avant même de savoir si nous avons besoin euh, d'avoir plus de temps et de savoir si, comme la Chambre l'avait indiqué dans une décision précédente, je vais vous retrouver les références citées par mon confrère dans le cadre de son appel, à savoir... And, um, euh, la décision E236-5 du 7 février 2013, à savoir si nous faisons vraiment une vraie différence entre ces deux types d'audience, ou s'il s'agit de la même chose et que vous serez amené à utiliser euh, les déclarations de ces souffrances comme des éléments éventuellement à charge dans le cadre de l'examen des faits et non pas uniquement de euh, l'éventuelle condamnation. Donc euh, c'est une clarification que je demande et en fonction, en fonction de ces éléments, nous euh, serons amenés ou pas à faire des contre-interrogatoires comme nous les faisons euh, dans le cadre des examens euh, purement factuels. President, thank you, and the Deputy International Co Prosecutor, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning to everyone. J'ai quelques remarques à faire. Tout d'abord, la défense de Nunchea a attendu ce lundi après-midi, 30 mars, pour mentionner qu'elle avait une courte demande à faire concernant les audiences portant sur les souffrances des parties civiles et l'incidence des crimes allégués sur les parties civiles. Et je note que ce qui a été dit oralement à l'audience ne correspond pas exactement à ce qui a été envoyé aux parties, c'est-à-dire les arguments développés par la défense de Nunchea dans sa mémoire d'appel. Les arguments sont bien plus radicaux que ce qu'on a entendu aujourd'hui. Donc cette demande, à mon avis, est tardive. 
nous avons euh, pardon, la défense de Nunchea a de mis Nunchea au dossier son mémoire d'appel fin décembre 2014 avec tous ses arguments. Ce n'est donc pas des arguments qu'il a découverts en mars 2015, mais elle a attendu jusqu'au 30 mars 2015 pour les sortir à la dernière minute, juste avant que les parties civiles viennent pour déposer. Et d'ailleurs, je note aussi que la défense de Munchia a spécialement demandé que ce débat n'ait pas lieu aujourd'hui, mais demain. Donc juste avant que les parties civiles soient amenées à déposer et alors qu'elles seraient déjà probablement aptes. Le mémorandum de la Chambre qui est pertinent en cette matière, c'est E315-1. Il est daté du 17 décembre 2014. Et donc, je pense que la défense avait plus de trois mois pour... Oui, Monsieur le Président, je n'ai pas donné d'IRN, mais par yes, contre, le numéro du mémo de la Chambre, I just gave the reference qui est E315-1, qui est daté 1, du 17 décembre 2014, 2014, qui concerne ces audiences regarding concernant les souffrances des parties civiles. C'est les paragraphes 7 à 9 de ce the mémorandum. Donc, il date du 17 décembre 2014. La défense avait plus de trois mois dès ce moment-là pour émettre des réserves sur le format, sur le contenu de ce type d'audience, mais elle a attendu la dernière minute pour le faire. Alors, dans les arguments développés devant la Chambre de la Cour suprême, la défense de Nunchia fait beaucoup référence à la pratique dans les pays de common law. On parle de l'Australie, on parle du Canada, de la Nouvelle-Zélande, des États-Unis, d'Israël. Mais dans ces pays, il n'existe pas de parti civil. Le rôle des victimes est limité à celui de témoins ou alors un rôle concernant euh, les audiences limitées à la détermination de la peine, mais pas la culpabilité des accusés. Ici, devant cette chambre, nous avons par contre des parties civiles, dont l'un des rôles est de participer en soutien à l'accusation aux poursuites des personnes responsables. La jurisprudence de la common law ou des juridictions internationales n'a donc pas beaucoup d'intérêt ici, n'est pas pertinente ni applicable. La Chambre, faut-il le rappeler, a aussi la faculté d'utiliser et de se référer à tout élément de preuve produit devant elle. Pour autant que cet élément de preuve ait été recueilli de manière légale, qu'il soit crédible, que les parties aient pu en débattre. Alors effectivement, il y a deux situations devant cette chambre, mais deux situations qui finalement se rapprochent. La première, c'est celle où les parties civiles sont entendues en priorité sur les faits, sur la preuve. Et là, c'est vrai que toutes les parties peuvent les interroger, mais par contre, à la fin, la possibilité leur est donnée de faire une déclaration sur les souffrances. Dans un souci de respecter le principe du contradictoire, la Chambre de première instance a toujours dit d'ailleurs que dans cette deuxième partie consacrée à une déclaration sur les souffrances, s'il y avait des éléments nouveaux, notamment à charge contre les accusés, les parties pouvaient alors ensuite reposer des questions à toute partie civile. La deuxième situation, c'est celle que nous allons connaître jeudi et vendredi, c'est-à-dire les parties civiles entendues en priorité sur leurs souffrances et sur l'incidence des crimes allégués sur elles. Et je me souviens que nous avons déjà eu un débat devant cette chambre où les avocats principaux des parties civiles et moi-même avions expliqué qu'il n'était pas possible de séparer totalement 
de dissocier les souffrances endurées des crimes qui étaient allégués. Pour pouvoir comprendre quelles souffrances on a pu endurer, il faut d'abord expliquer d'où elles résultent, c'est-à-dire parler des faits. Et dans la mesure où les faits entrent dans le champ du procès, et où la défense a l'occasion de poser ces questions, à ce sujet, ce sont des éléments de preuve que la Chambre de première instance doit pouvoir utiliser, y compris dans son jugement. Il faut insister aussi sur le fait que dans le cas du procès 2-1, toutes les parties ont eu l'occasion de poser la question qu'elles souhaitaient aux parties civiles durant les quatre jours d'audience qui étaient consacrés aux souffrances des parties civiles à l'incidence des crimes alléviés sur elles. Et c'était, si je ne me trompe pas, le 29 mai, 27, 29 et 30 mai, 2013 ainsi que le 4 juin 2013. Alors le temps, c'est vrai, était assez limité, mais des questions quand même étaient posées, à la fois par le parquet et par la défense, concernant le fond, concernant les faits, concernant les crimes, et pas uniquement les souffrances. Alors, la défense ne peut pas dire qu'elle ne savait pas que des portions de déposition des parties civiles relatives aux crimes allégués pourraient ou seraient utilisées par la Chambre dans son jugement. Par exemple, à l'audience du 27 mai 2013, l'avocat de la défense Son Haroun, entre 11h40 et 11h57, a posé des questions à la partie civile on Pali, non pas concernant ses souffrances, mais bien les circonstances de l'évacuation de Phnom Penh et le point de savoir s'il y avait eu contrainte ou usage de violence. Maître Victor Cochin a posé des questions à la partie civile Yos Pal le 27 mai 2013, pendant 20 minutes, entre 15h40 et 16h, et la Chambre avait accordé davantage de minutes à Victor Copé à sa demande parce qu'il a interrogé la partie civile sur le sort des soldats de l'ONOL au moment de l'évacuation de Phnom Penh. Il ne s'agit pas de souffrance, il ne s'agit pas vraiment d'incidence, il s'agit de faits. Maître Verken, toujours pour cette même partie civile, a continué à poser des questions pendant 10 minutes. Et donc, je pourrais multiplier les exemples durant ces quatre journées d'audience, mais en tout cas, il y a eu possibilité pour la défense de poser des questions, même si les temps étaient limités, et ces questions portaient sur le fond du dossier. Alors le problème maintenant, c'est que Nuncia veut la, ce qu'on appelle en français le beurre et l'argent du beurre. C'est-à-dire qu'il veut à la fois pouvoir mettre à l'épreuve les parties civiles, mettre à l'épreuve leur déposition, donc attaquer la preuve qu'ils donnent, et en même temps pouvoir dire à la Chambre d'appel que ce n'est pas acceptable, que la Chambre puisse utiliser les preuves recueillies devant cette Chambre lors de ces journées d'audience. Donc là, ça c'est essentiellement ce qui ressort de, du mémoire d'appel. Aujourd'hui, on nous dit qu'il faudrait sans doute plus de temps si les preuves sont utilisées euh, à charge et peuvent être utilisées par la Chambre dans son jugement. Alors oui, certainement, il y a une possibilité, j'imagine, d'aménager le temps que la Défense plus de temps que les 10 ou 15 minutes qui étaient imparties durant le dossier 2 bar 1. Mais la Chambre a déjà fait preuve par le passé de souplesse à cet égard. Il n'y a pas de raison que ça change. Par contre, demander que le même temps soit donné à la défense qu'au parti civil serait exagéré dans la mesure où il s'agit tout de même d'audience principalement sur les souffrances endurées, même si des éléments de fait sont également mentionnés. Donc, il me semble que la demande de la défense est exagérée dans la mesure où elle demande un temps so, équitable entre is celui qui est for donné au parti civil et peut-être aussi à l'accusation et celui qui est donné à la défense.
prosecution. Tout ce que j'avais à dire, merci, merci. That is all I wanted to point out, Mr. President. Monsieur le Président, juste une correction, parce que j'ai fait une erreur. Mr. President, I would like to correct something. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. J'ai quelques you, observations I have a few comments, um, pour expliquer to explain, uh, de la manière uh, la plus claire possible, as possible la façon dont nous sommes arrivés à cette proposition d'agenda et proposer éventuellement une solution and I would like pour satisfaire les éventuelles demandes des uns et des autres si la Chambre venait à considérer Chamber que ces demandes sont euh, légitimes. That, uh, these are les trois éléments qui ont guidé uh, notre guided, um, are, uh, réflexion pour arriver à ce à cet agenda, c'est d'une part le fait que pour nous, ces audiences all, sur le préjudice uh, sont la façon principale pour les partis civils civil de participer au procès et d'expliquer pourquoi elles participent au procès par l'intermédiaire du collectif. Uh, et donc il est fondamental qu'à un moment, dans ce procès, nous parlons du préjudice des partis civils, du préjudice, civil, civil, préjudice moral, moral, physique, physique et matériel and material qui harm that justifies that they are participating in this trial. Est plus and it's even more so important with regard to Trump Court, Trump Court because we have a, no, a, a very great number of civil parties that were admitted by the co-investigating judges uh, for this Nous particular segment. We have 51 civil parties uh, who have been admitted et donc, nous avons bien évidemment à cœur de pouvoir so proposer la déposition d'un maximum uh, the de parties civiles the lors de ces civil deux parties, jours. Uh, during these two days. Le deuxième élément qui nous a guidé, c'est de maintenir uh, la spécificité uh, de l'audience sur le préjudice des parties civiles, en faisant une distinction, mais aussi des rapprochements avec les faits. Je pense que nous sommes d'accord avec toutes les parties pour dire que I think le préjudice that all et les faits agree sont intrinsèquement the, the liés et qu'il est nécessaire à un moment d'aborder les faits pour parler du préjudice. Et je rebondis and sur les like deux exemples qui ont été donnés par mon confrère Coppe. Nous considérons que la privation de nourriture constitue un préjudice de la préjudice. Nous parlerons we will speak les parties civiles de ce que nous pensons évoqueront we'll la question de la nourriture lors de, euh, of food, euh, des dépositions uh, sur le préjudice. Nous considérons qu'un préjudice moral est également consécutif also, à la perte de proches. Et donc, quand les parties civiles s'expriment so, sur la perte de leurs proches, il paraît loved ones, évident qu'elles puissent aussi s'expliquer sur les conditions dans lesquelles ces proches ont disparu. Their loved ones. Donc, d'un so, côté, on the one nous hand, sommes d'accord avec les parties pour with the parties to say that, yes, indeed, there's an intrinsic link between the facts and the harm suffered, and therefore it is necessary for, this, uh, for these hearings to mirror Mais this link, pas avec but la we do not agree with the defense when la même chose. we believe that it's the same la thing. The fundamental difference is that the civil parties, sur le when they speak about their harm, de ce are speaking about what they experienced et personally, seule. directly, and only et what happened to them. And they're not heard by the chamber about what they saw or about what they knew, but only about what they experienced, about what they lived through. So therefore, this, of course, reduces in a considerable way the scope of the facts they're speaking about before the trial, before the chamber. And this is why it seems to us necessary for the other parties to only put questions on the facts mais qui ne les concerne que elles, the facts et dès lors, that le temps ne serait pas également réparti entre les parties civiles et la défense. Le troisième élément qui nous a guidé, c'est bien évidemment le principe du contradictoire. Nous principle. avons un intérêt direct are, course, à ce que euh, les dépositions des parties civiles euh, qui civil vont se dérouler sous vos yeux euh, jeudi et vendredi Friday, euh, fassent l'objet d'un débat contradictoire 
be la manière la plus transparente possible. In way, in la question maintenant qui se pose à la Chambre, c'est comment respecter le principe du contradictoire dans cette spécificité qui est celle de l'audience sur le préjudice. Kind of hearing, ce qui nous a guidé pour refaire cette proposition, so et ce sont les mémos de la Chambre, tout simplement, c'est le mémo qui nous a été adressé en, en janvier uh, dernier, January, le E315-1, dans lequel la Chambre uh, se réserve le droit de donner right euh, la possibilité aux partis de questionner les partis civils civil si de nouveaux faits sont évoqués par les partis civils ou si des allégations contre les accusés sont formulées à l'occasion de ces dépositions. Et c'est le paragraphe 8 du mémo E315-1 que vous in which, uh, you, uh, déposé en décembre 2014. Pour comprendre un petit peu plus ce que vous entendiez, ce que la Chambre entendait par « nouveaux faits », nous nous sommes euh, basés sur un autre mémo que vous avez édité l'année dernière, c'est le document E2677-3, c'est un, un mémo qui avait été euh, édité à l'époque suite à la requête de, de, de Kyosampan de faire réentendre les partis civils euh, qui avaient euh, mis en cause son client party again lors de la déposition sur le préjudice. Challenged et vous aviez considéré qu'il fallait euh, considérer ce qui était des faits nouveaux par rapport to consider new à la constitution de la des victimes ou par rapport au formulaire d'information des victimes. Et tout ce qui était nouveau par rapport forms. à ces documents pouvait justifier euh, des questions de la part de la défense. Donc c'est guidé so par ces deux mémos que nous avons fait cette proposition. Cette proposition, elle And porte bien son nom, c'est une proposition. Indeed, nous attendions stated, de voir si la défense allait, we faire, euh, allait émettre des observations par rapport à cette proposition, et notamment à la lumière de l'appel que tant l'équipe de Nounchea uh, et l'équipe de Kyosampan well ont defense, formulé. Que son point de team nous ne savions pas si euh, la not, défense allait faire une requête. Aujourd'hui, c'est le cas. Request, de la part de euh, la défense de Nounchea, il semblerait The new chair defense d'avoir suffisamment de temps says pour that questionner les partis civils sur les faits. Euh, je pense que Kyosampan a peut-être besoin que la Chambre se prononce un petit peu plus pour, pour savoir ce qu'il souhaite. Encore une fois, de notre côté, nous considérons que c'est vraiment la Chambre de décider soit de valider les propositions, soit de nous demander de la changer, et de décider si le temps que nous avons proposé pour les autres parties est adéquat ou non. Encore une fois, de notre côté, nous considérons que c'est vraiment la Chambre de décider Côté, plus l'audience est contradictoire, plus, plus nous nous trouvons notre compte aussi. Nous more we will aucun intérêt from this. It is de not at all la in our des parties dans to prevent cette the audience sur le préjudice. From, uh, in, uh, these, uh, Il est vrai que le temps uh, que nous It's avons uh, prévu pour chaque parti est réduit. Uh, is il est réduit limited. pour tout le monde, il est réduit aussi pour nous, everyone, for, uh, 40 for us minutes as well. pour chaque parti civil, c'est peu. Nous time. avons été obligés And de tenir we compte de la réduction du temps d'audience du fait uh, de l'interruption uh, à 11h30 of, uh, de à la demande de Kyosampan. La réduction du temps d'audience a été majoritairement impactée sur notre temps de parole. Essentially, euh, là encore, on nous avons fait une proposition time, again, à charge pour la Chambre de Now reconnaître chamber si celle-ci permet de respecter le principe du contradictoire et les principes du procès équitable. Uh, en prévision de ces observations orales, euh, so, nous sommes un petit peu euh, renseignés et organisés. As we were expecting the uh, or reaction, à la Chambre, and we could make a proposal to the chamber, possibly, which would be to start the questioning of two civil parties tomorrow afternoon, ce qui du coup à la which Chambre therefore would allow the chamber to have much more leeway dans la gestion in du temps de parole pour uh, the les management of the speech time for each of the parties. Et si And, uh, la Chambre est ouverte à cette proposition, nous avons d'ores et déjà identifié deux parties civiles qui seraient à même de venir déposer demain après-midi, ce qui permettrait du coup une gestion du temps beaucoup plus libre pour que la défense puisse poser des questions qu'elle souhaite 
to give sur more time les éléments factuels de la déposition de questions de partie. Donc nous sommes finalement de notre côté assez ouverts, nous considérons so we're quite que flexible. la proposition qui a été uh, so faite répond uh, aux mémos uh, et aux injonctions de la Chambre uh, et conforme uh, à la jurisprudence uh, antérieure. Of, uh, the nous chamber avons vraiment respecté le même modèle que celui qui avait été fait uh, l'année dernière dans le cadre de 1. Nous avons fait le même modèle que celui qui avait été fait l'année dernière dans le cadre de 1. But if you consider that uh, this should be amended, well, our request is that there be that all civil parties be heard insofar that all of these civil parties are already in Compen. So we would like to be able to hear eight civil parties during these hearings. And it is, seems to us that it's not exactly fair to give equal time to the defense because what we're speaking about, once again, we're speaking here about the personal experiences of the civil parties and not what they saw or not what they knew back then. And therefore, we're proposing finally Uh, to show our uh, goodwill to begin tomorrow afternoon with two civil parties so that we enjoy all of the time necessary to put the necessary voilà questions to the civil parties. Président. These are my submissions, Mr. President. Thank you very much. You may now proceed, uh, Council for la Mr. Kiersampan. Oui, Monsieur le Président, yes, juste Mr. quelques President, secondes pour uh, rectifier une erreur que j'ai faite dans mon intervention tout à l'heure. Je voudrais faire une petite correction à ce que je faisais référence. Il y a un E267-3 à laquelle ma vient également de faire référence. Oui, je voulais corriger cette petite erreur dans le nombre. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I, I, I feel the, the Gopé, need to merci, react to both um, deputy uh, co-prosecutor and uh, civil party lawyer. Um, I'm not quite sure if I follow um, the argument made by the prosecution about us being uh, too late with this point. Um, I would like to remind the chamber that um, obviously our appeal brief was due on the 29th of December. Uh, that was the day that we uh, filed our, uh, brief, our appeal brief and were able to fully uh, develop our argument. Um, so uh, both parties, all parties are aware of this um, um, fondamental problem that we have. However, on the 16th of January um, of this year, in E336, uh, we filed a request uh, with the Chamber that has been already decided upon uh, by the Chamber. It is called our request regarding certain practices to be undertaken, undertaken when examining uh, upcoming civil party uh, TCCP 271, that is uh, CISEN. Uh, and you will read Saisen, in uh, paragraph uh, 12 that we developed that argument already. So uh, I think this argument is known um, to all parties, so tout I'm not quite sure if I follow uh, the point of us being uh, too late. Um, what I would also like to uh, point out is uh, something that I haven't heard uh, either from the prosecution or from the civil party lawyers, and that is that our um, analysis that we have made in our appeal brief, um, meaning that in the judgment, civil party impact testimony was um, used as evidence uh, 255 times. Um, that, that has not been contested, that I find uh, interesting. Uh, this means that we seem to be in agreement that um, whatever the civil party might say during his or her civil uh, impact testimony is in fact evidence. And then if that is the case, then we have um, a serious situation. And if that is uh, the case, we should um, fundamentally think um, what the law is. Uh, as you know, we have quoted uh, the trial chamber itself. Uh, when it set out Nous its uh, ruling uh, on this uh, and I have been trying to be practical as to the vision of time, but it doesn't change the fact that the law, the rules, uh, as indicated by yourself, is quite clear. Whatever a civil party 
is saying during civil impact is not evidence that go, uh, that go to the fact. Um, I see you not uh, uh, judge fans asking why, but that's how um, we interpret your ruling, and if uh, we see it wrong, we, then, um, please enlighten us. Um, what we can do, what we have done, is uh, identify 255 instances in which uh, the trial chamber in K002-1 uh, used civil party um, impact testimony as evidence. That is uh, what we believe uh, the situation. If that is um, going to be the issue uh, not only in this segment but in coming segments, we need to have uh, maybe uh, a ruling uh, from the trial chamber on this uh, issue of, of big principle, I believe. And uh, we should know what the situation is. Um, if um, evidence given on, on food shortages, etc., is in fact evidence, then um, we need to have uh, the opportunity and we need to exercise our right fait, to um, eh cross-examine uh, the particular civil party. President. President. What about your requests? Qu'en est-il de votre demande? What about the request of lit co lawyers who hold the hearing tomorrow afternoon of two civil parties? What is your response to that? It's, it's, um, it's maybe a methodological issue. We, 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 I, I suppose we need to know um, what the law is, what the procedures are. If um, the trial chamber is of the opinion that whatever is being said by a civil party during impact testimony is in fact evidence, um, hence confirming um, the judgment, then we need to have half time and then it would be a, a proper suggestion to follow, I, I believe, from the civil parties to maybe start tomorrow and have equal time. However, if you, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours, confirm your earlier ruling, then there is no place for any evidence being put forward during civil party impact testimony. And then, uh, of course, we would... Um, do the same thing as we did in case 002 slash 1 and de, de, de only briefly ask some questions um, to the civil party. I might recall, um, and we also briefly Je mentioned me that in uh, our, uh, our appeal brief, when Nguyen Chia was very sick um, at the time in 2013, uh, he was requested 2013, if, uh, demandé, despite his illness, si, uh, we maladie, could nevertheless continue with having hearings on civil uh, party impact, uh, because, as you've indicated, um, it wasn't civil, going to be used as evidence. And at the time, we said, uh, le, of course, raison, no problem, um, we can continue. But then, of course, we were um, quite shocked to, to realize that what was in fact said during his absence was used at times as, as real, as hard evidence. And that is, I think, the situation that we are facing. Maybe before talking practicalities, we need to know from the trial chamber what the law is. Avant de so, may we, um, may we oh, what about the defense counsel for Mr. Kilson Fong? What is your response uh, to the, the request of LITCO lawyers who hold uh, hearings of two civil party tomorrow afternoon? Because the LITCO lawyer mentioned already that uh, the defense counsel for the accused uh, want to have equal time uh, to put questions to the civil party who will come to express their impact statement. The chamber decided to hold two days hearing. La personne, la chambre avait décidé and so we have also considered uh, the uh, time reserved for uh, parties to put some relevant questions. Des questions we have uh, taken into account 
all factors. And as a result, de we now hear the request from uh, Litko Lawyer to hold uh, the hearings tomorrow afternoon of two civil parties. So this matter concerns uh, the arrangement of our court proceeding as effective as possible. So what is your response to that, uh, counsel for Mr. Kirsten Monsieur le Président, en ce qui Mr. concerne President, le um, temps qui uh, sera éventuellement that, uh, nécessaire pour uh, interroger les parties civiles en cas de besoin, je dois dire que uh, j'ai well, un problème d'évaluation car, comme vous le savez, uh, this, la plupart du temps, nous, you know, nous avons simplement des déclarations de parties civiles qui sont facing testimonies of civil parties um, that uh, peu, uh, détaillés, are not very detailed uh, or simple langue de travail. Donc, uh, in in Khmer, that are qui ne sont qu'en Khmer. Only in Khmer. J'ai du mal à donner so exactement une projection du temps dont nous aurons besoin. Uh, ça c'est le premier point. That's Ensuite, état de cause, uh, ce qui est clair, c'est que s'il y avait des éléments nouveaux, uh, et s'il y avait des éléments qui ne concernaient pas l'expérience personnelle des parties, nous serions bien évidemment amenés à poser des questions. We will put questions. Sur le deuxième point, With regard to point est two, que, which is, uh, are we uh, demain après to the idea of uh, uh, coming tomorrow afternoon? Well, then uh, uh, I would like to chambre. rely to the chamber's uh, decision. We are here in Phnom Penh, and, and, and when there are hearings, well, we come. Uh, it's clear que, uh, that uh, ce uh, nous permettait, uh, the afternoon would have uh, allowed uh, us qui pas to go over uh, elements that were not translated uh, from the civil party uh, documents that we just uh, received. Point, uh, That's true. It would have been useful in that case for us not uh, uh, to uh, not have the hearings in the afternoons uh, today uh, and tomorrow and yesterday. But of course, we uh, will uh, rely on uh, the Chamber's decision as far as what the Chamber may consider is the most practical solution. <laughs> President Gitmo uh, Lund, uh, International uh, Deputy uh, Co-Prosecutor, uh, the DVD uh, is running uh, out and uh, we uh, need some time for the AV to change the DVD first.